I want to welcome you to another segment of the Jermaine Brown Investing Show. Today is Friday, August the 29th, 2014. Yesterday, I spoke about a particular strategy that I like to utilize in the market called put writing or naked put writing or cash cover put writing. It's all really under the same field. Writing puts to acquire stock. Now, before I get into the rules of that, I mentioned yesterday that there was another strategy that is really more of a favorite of mine that I like to utilize in the market. And, and a little later on, I'm going to show you exactly how I implement said strategy in real life, okay, or in real terms, or in real trading. Now, before I mention about the rules to put writing, okay, Actually, let me get that out the way right now before I get into my next strategy. There, are, there were three rules to put writing, but I added a fourth. So I'm going to say four rules to put writing. I'm calling it four rules to writing put options, okay? And if you adhere to these four rules, folks, you should have a wonderful time trading options or doing this strategy. And I'm not going to sit up here and tell you you will not ever take a loss. We all take losses, but you can minimize or even reduce, re minimize or eliminate your losses if you know what you're doing. However, um, here are the four rules. Rule number one. You must like the stock, okay? You have to be willing to own this stock. Okay, that's the first rule. If, and remember, folks, if you break any of these rules, you're on your own. Don't say the strategy failed. It's not the strategy. It's you who failed. Because these rules are set in stone. Each, every trading concept has a rule. Or every trading philosophy or strategy has rules to it. And if you adhere to the rules, you should more or less do well. It's when we break the rules, okay, when we get into trouble. It's just like you know the rule is 55 um, miles per hour is the speed limit. Some of us choose to go over 70 and then we wonder why the man pulls us over. The cop pulls us over. You broke the rules. Just adhere to the rules and you'll be okay. So the first rule is you must like the stock. Don't do the strategy on the stock you're not willing to own. Because if you like the stock, that means you're willing to own it. If you don't, if you're not willing to own it, do not do the strategy to collect premiums. This is not the strategy to do it. There are other strategies for that. Rule number two. Okay? Rule number two, you must like the stock at the price or the strike price that you pick. So let's say stock XYZ is trading at $20. You don't mind owning it at 19. You have to be willing to own it at 19 because there's always the chance that stock XYZ is going to drop below 19. So if you're not willing to own it at 19, don't write the strike price at 19. Write the price at the stock at the write the, the, the strike at the price that you're willing to own the stock at. So the first rule is you must like the stock. The second rule is you must like the stock at the price that you pick, the strike price that you pick. The third rule.
Okay, you must have the cash and or margin to purchase the stock. That means when you when you put five grand of cash into a brokerage account like Think or Swim, Options House, Options Express, so on and so forth, they're gonna give you five grand of margin. So they, for every dollar above five that you put in, they're gonna put in an equal amount. It's like cash, you know, so it's like going to the bank and getting a loan and they loan you the money. This is a loan of margin. They tr it's treated as money. Yes, you have to pay interest on it, but that's okay because the interest is tax deductible. But, so let's assume you got $5,000 of cash and then you got $5,000 of margin. That means you can write up to $10,000 worth of stock. Okay, so if you're doing stock XYZ, which is at $20 times 100 shares, that's two grand. Two, four, six, eight, ten. That means you can theoretically write up to five option contracts, or write up to five put contracts, okay, which would then give you 10 grand worth of stock to work with to collect premium. So that means don't write 15 to 20. I mean, I mean, don't write seven to ten or more contracts because they will allow you to over leverage. Over leveraging means going over your cash and margin. So if you got ten thousand dollars to work with, which is a five of cash, five of margin, and you you go over, they'll allow you to trade over ten grand, even though you only got ten grand to cover the trade. But the problem is, if the stock goes below your strike, you have to come up with that difference. Whatever amount you go over, they're going to make you come up with at least half that. So you got to keep those things in mind. So you got to have the cash, you must have the cash and or margin to, to purchase the stock. If you don't have it, please don't do this, don't utilize this strategy. And then there's a fourth rule that I had recently added and it's very, very important. Because I noticed that a lot of people get in trouble doing it on this in this time period. from earning slash news events unless you just don't mind owning the stock at whatever the price is should the stock fall. Like for instance, stock XYZ is trading at $20. An earnings announcement is getting ready to come out in within say the third, before the third Friday of the month. Let's assume you're doing monthly options, okay? The premiums are gonna be super inflated so that's gonna allow you to collect a lot more money. But now, here's where the issue is. When earnings come out, depending what the report is, how good, how bad, or whether it was expected, it's gonna determine any, how the stock may move. The stock can either gap up, it can gap down, it can stay the same, it can move up a little, it can move down a little. You don't know exactly how the stock is gonna to react to the news, so you don't wanna end up writing, say, a $19 put option on stock XYZ, which is trading at 20, and then the stock gaps down to $10 off the earnings announcement. That's, no premium that you collect is gonna offset that loss. You're gonna take a huge haircut, as we call it, in the streets, or you're gonna take a huge loss. So to me, avoid the earnings, and the, the, the announcements are made well in advance so you'll know if there's earnings coming out. As a matter of fact, if you're trading a particular stock or particular, if you're trading particular options, you will get a feel of when earnings is coming out because you're gonna see that the premiums are too high relatively for the stock. If you see that all of a sudden you're trading stock XYZ and you're used to getting 35, 40 cents to 50 cents for an option, and yet now you see that you can easily collect a dollar or a dollar fifty for the same option, that kind of tells you there's there's a reason why those premiums are super inflated, which is called the implied volatility, which is very high. A high implied volatility, you better find out why is that high implied volatility, or why is that implied volatility very high? 
because there is something with this particular stock you need to be aware of. So if you follow these four rules, you shall have success writing put options. Now, let me move on to my favorite strategy that I like to implement in the market. strategy that I like to implement in the markets, folks, is a combination of a naked put or selling a naked put and also selling a naked call. It is called in the vernacular terms or in the industry as a short strangle. Let me explain to you how a short strangle works. Let's say, remember when I told you in the previous episode that Professionals can make money regardless of the stock goes up or the market goes up, stays sideways or goes down. Well, here is how they're able to do that. Let's assume you write a put option, okay? And when you write a put option, a put option is a, bit, a bullish strategy. So you're expecting the stock to either stay where it's at or go higher, but stay above the strike price that you chose. So that's why it's considered bullish. Okay? So you can make money if the stock goes up, stays sideways, or even goes slightly down. But if it goes too far down, you're going to lose money. So to get around that problem, how? what if there was a way where I could still sell my put option, but I can still make money even if the stock were to go down quite a bit. Or go down moderately, not too far far down because then I'm going to be taking losses. But there is a way, there, are, there is a particular strategy, there, there are a number of strategies that you that can accomplish said goal. But this particular strategy is a favorite of mine. It's called the short strangle. The reason it's called the short strangle is you're selling an out of the money put so let's say stock XYZ is trading at $20. I am selling an out of the money put, which is that means I'm giving someone the right to sell me their stock at 19. But then what I am also doing to collect another premium, I am also selling an out of the money call. So that means I'm selling a call at say 21, which means I'm giving someone the right to buy shares of stock XYZ at 21. The stock is currently trading at 20. Now, the thing is, I don't own the shares, but I'm giving someone the right to buy shares at 21, and I'm giving someone the right to, the right to sell shares at 19. So I'm playing really both sides of the market. So if the stock goes down, I made money on the calls. If the stock goes up, I made money on the puts. If the stock stays sideways, I make money on both the calls and the puts. So one way or the other, I'm going to make some money here. Okay? So it's called a short strangle. Okay? And that's it. Out of the money. Call plus an out of the money put. Okay? It's an out of the money call plus an out of the money put. Now, let me use a word of caution here. These are not, a, this is not a strategy I would recommend for someone who has no experience trading. Because these both are these. At, uh, selling puts and selling calls is what they, they are called undefined risks. Which means, because if a stock goes, even though really the put is defined because a stock can only theoretically go down to zero. A stock cannot go below zero. So technically, the put Writing a put option is a defined risk, even though they call it an undefined risk. But if writing a, a, a naked call is undefined, the, re, the, re, the reason for that is because a stock can theoretically go up to infinity. It can go up to the moon. There is no limit to how high a stock can go. So there is what they call defined risks, 
And then there are undefined risks. I trade undefined risks. Now, defined risk is for those who are much more conservative, which means you'll know exactly how much you're going to lose if the trade goes against you. That's a, that is a viable strategy, and I do utilize those strategies on occasion, which is, which is called defined risk. But I prefer undefined risk because why? I can collect a lot more premium for a similar type of, um, it's, like I said, I pretty much have an idea where a stock is not going to go to. You, you, you'll get a feel of this as you go along. You'll have an idea where a stock is most likely not going to go to. So therefore, my risks are really defined. But this is a strategy that is utilized by professional traders in the markets, people like Tom Sosnoff and, and others, Tony Batista and others. They, this is a particular strategy. By the way, they um, are the makers of Tasty Trade, which is a very popular educational company, or becoming much more popular educational company. They're also um, Tom Sosnoff, he is the founder of Think or Swim, okay, which which was like a, a um, trading platform. Okay, so, and these are both professional traders, Tom Sosnoff and Tony Batista. Anyway, short strangles is a very popular strategy I like to utilize, and there's another one, but I'm not gonna get into that today because I don't utilize it as much, even though I do like that strategy, but this is a strategy I utilize quite a bit. Um, but for a beginner, I always suggest just selling the put option but here is how a short strangle theoretically works. And I'm gonna use McDonald's again as my example because it, it, it helps to add a real world company to, as to my example. But just know that this is for illustration purposes only and do keep in mind that the stock is not trading at this price so don't even think of trying to pull this strategy on that, I mean, to put the strategy on that particular stock at this price because you won't be able to get it. Okay, let's say stock simple McDonald's. Again, the stock symbol is MCD. So McDonald's is selling at current price. It's $20. Again, McDonald's is not selling at this price currently, folks, but I'm just using this as an example for illustration purposes only, okay? All my strategies here are for illustration purposes only. I am not suggesting that you go out and actually implement such strategies. There requires a little bit more education to it, but this is just to give you an understanding of what it is that I do. So this way you, you'll understand that. Okay, so the current price of of uh, McDonald's is say $20. So what I will do is this. Where remember yesterday I said if I sell a, a $19 put option, I'll collect 50 cents. Well, we're gonna go along that same premise. So I will sell So what I would do is I would sell a McDonald's call option. We're going to do this on a one contract basis. Remember, one contract equals 100 shares of stock. Okay, so one contract basis, that means um, I'm going to sell a McDonald's call option at $21. Okay, and, I'm going, and the premium I'm going to collect is 50 cents. Okay, so I'm going to collect 50 cents in premium, let's say. Then what I'm also going to do is sell. So that's step one. Step two is sell. Let's 